Okay, a bit of an afterthought. I realized that since this is meant to be a ranged attack, so basically they're shooting, and in this case, the frame in which you want the attack to occur is actually mid sequence. So if you go into your animation, and we're in attack, click down to see the actual frames. So right here is when the arm is fully extended, frame 12. And that's really when you want the bullet to shoot out, because then you have all these frames where the arm is retracted. So if, you, if the last frame of the animation is when you want the attack to occur, that would be fine. But in this case, the frame in which you want the bullet to be shot is really mid animation cycle. So what we're going to do is we can add an event. But before we do that, we need to create the instantiated object. So if you notice bullet image down here, you didn't miss anything. All I did was drag and drop this between videos. I just took this from the external folder. So let's make a prefab. Let's take that and pop it into our environment, into our scene. Let's give it a couple things. Let's give it a rigid body with zero gravity so it doesn't fall towards the ground. And we're not going to give it a collider because we're not going to go that far. This is just, a, again, about controlling the animation itself. And I, and I don't want to make presumptions about the context of how this is going to be used. So what we're going to do is we're also going to give it a script. Suppose you don't have to. You could do this another way. But it's a very clean way of doing it. So at the start, we're simply putting in get component, the rigid body 2D that we just added, the velocity, and it's going to be a new vector 3. And we want it to be moving horizontally left to right. So that means the x velocity has to be positive. So let's make it like 4. And the other one's a 0. Because we don't want it moving up and down or towards or away from the camera. Just left to right. Okay. So we created the bullet. We gave it a rigid body. We added a script to give it momentum. We take that and we drag and drop that into our assets area that now turns it into a prefab. We get rid of the original because we don't want it in the scene. Almost done. So we've created a prefab, but our hero object doesn't know that it exists. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into hero control, and we're going to create a new variable. So it's public transform, and we'll call it spell. Have to be careful with the naming because you really don't want the name of a variable to ever match the name of an, um, a script. So if it seems like I'm avoiding certain words, that's intentional. Because I've actually had situations where the name of a variable and the name of the script are the same and so it can get confusing as to whether you're trying to make a change to the variable or if you're referring to something within another script. Okay, so we're going to... Okay, so we created that object. Excuse me, we created that variable. So here it is, spell. Make sure you're using the prefab. We're going to drag and drop it there. Now we're almost done. In our hero control, we're going to create a new function. It's outside of update. It's going to be void. You can call it what you want. I called it shoot now. Once you save that, this will now be accessible in the animation. So you go to your hero object. You go to animation. And if you click on this little icon here for add event, the function, you can see there it is, shoot now. Now you just take that, 
and move it to wherever we said 12 was. That's 12 over there. If you point at this, it'll tell you the name of the function that is being utilized. So shoot now function will occur at that frame. Now we just have to tell it what is should be done with that function. And it's just going to be an instantiate. So instantiate, and it's the name of the object that you created there, spell. And it's going to be, you need to pull in the coordinates of the player. So this gets a little bit messy. Not to mention that it really needs to be offset based on where their hand is, where the you know wand is. So what I'm going to do is for simplicity's sake, I'm going to give it a fixed location and then it's just a matter of changing that fixed location to the location of your player because again I'm trying to make this be as um, as bare bones as possible so that it's more easily integrated. So I don't want to marry it to a bunch of variables only for you have to uh, extract those variables out. So we'll just do a simple vector 3 And we don't want the rotation to be changed, so we do spell dot rotation. So the rotation of the spell object. So it looks like And again, this part is placeholder. You're going to need to put in the coordinates of your player. almost perfect. So we'll just tweak it a little bit. So if you're using a decimal when you're doing vectors you need to drop in the letter F or else it gets confused. There we go. So again, it's married to this location, so if you're moving your character up and down, it won't work. It'll come out at the same location, so you just need to change this part to wherever the coordinates are. Maybe the wand itself has its own coordinates rather than being part of the player, because right now, the wand is actually part of the player. What you could do is the wand could be its own object and then that way you could look for the coordinates of the wand. But uh, that should do it. So it was that easy to coordinate or synchronize um, an event based on what frame is being displayed on the screen.